Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stan Lee did. This particular video, I'm going to introduce two heroes and one creature, both of those two heroes being native to the futuristic dimension which is the reality where basically it's set in the distant future and the native heroes and villains are descendants of the modern day heroes and villains. So, um, there's that. And if you guys bear with me, I'll read you the first of those three things. And I hope it's worth it for you guys. Alice three, real name, Alison Hatcherson, the third height and weight varied. Status, hero, and descendant of Alice. Base, futuristic dimension, mobile. Intelligence, three and a half brains. Behavior, loving, willful, and protective. She'll do anything to protect all innocents. Lethality, extremely lethal to most opponents. Weaknesses, she has no healing factor, along with a lack of awareness. Powers. She has most of the powers of her ancestor. She also possesses a bionic cannon for a left arm known as her Wonder Cannon, which is used to make one or more of her targets hallucinate in order to incapacitate them. Eyes. Bright green. Hair. Bright blonde. Origin. In the futuristic dimension, the native Alice is a powerful warrior who rules the native Wonderland, known as Alice Three. One day, the, the Black Queen was transported by Vortex to the futuristic, futuristic dimension to check her dominance in the future Wonderland. When she started fighting Alice Three, the future hero used her Vorpion to amputate her left arm, forcing the Black Queen to flee. After getting some assistance from Psyblade, the native Madame Shear, Alice Three now wields a Wonder Cannon that would be used to make her more difficult as an opponent to put up with in combat. Costume. She has the same outfit as her ancestors. Teams, solitary with her ancestors and other heroes. Original inspiration, Alice in Wonderland. The next one is the biological hybrid that I'm going to introduce. Hope you guys bear with me. Baraconda. Real name, inapplicable. Length, 45 feet. Weight, 13 tons. Status, villain. And creation of Dr. Scream. Base, mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior, savage, destructive, and craving. It'll always try to cure its hunger. Lethality, utterly dangerous to its opponents. Weaknesses, explosives, and stab wounds. Powers. It has the head and fins of a barracuda, and the body of an anaconda. It has all the capabilities of both organisms, along with having infrared vision. Eyes, deep green, hair, none. Origin. At one point, Dr. Scream decided to create a monstrous horror that's half barracuda and half anaconda, naming it the ferocious barraconda. Scream commanded it to seek out and destroy Denstrini. When the heroic Denstrini was struggling during the fight, Pym soon arrived and helped slay the Barraconda. Upset of another fail, Dr. Scream decided to recover the Barraconda for future use. Costume. It's covered in fish and reptilian scales. Teams, solitary, for Dr. Scream or with others. Original inspiration? Barracudas and Anacondas. This is the last character, the last thing that I'm going to introduce for this video. I hope you guys would like focus and such, no hard feelings. Captain Space. Real name, Captain Janet Victors. Height, 30 feet, weight, 3.5 tons. Status, hero in Cosmic Defender. Base, futuristic dimension, mobile. Intelligence, Four brains. Behavior. Willful and defensive. She'll always try to defend the innocents. 
lethality, deadly during a fight, weaknesses, thoughts of failure, powers. She has great size and strength, a high IQ, high willpower, and is an expert in combat. She wields a disintegration gun that could turn organic matter into ash. She's also in full control of her spiral starship. Eyes, olive green, hair, deep brown, and a short bob. Origin. In the futuristic dimension, Janet Victors was a rookie space cadet with her older sister Dorella when the two got exposed to cosmic radiation. After becoming 30 feet in height, Janet learned that Dorella developed a ty tyrannical personality and attempted to kill everyone on board. After Janet defeated her, she disowned Dorella as a sister and the two became eternal enemies. Earning the name Captain Space, Janet became the captain of the Spiral, and later learned that she and Dorella were both descendants of the genocidal Nazi commander Valkyrie, urging her further to save the innocents from all forms of harm. Costume. She wears a silver fabric space uniform. Teams. Solitary, with her crew, or with other heroes. Or's inspiration, Captain Kirk. Well, I hope, um... Those three characters are comprehensible for you guys, and just so you know, a few nights ago, in like three in the morning, I made a rough draft for Madam Shear. I I don't know if I would be skilled at designing comic books, but in terms of a rough draft, I made a double-sided paper for Madam Shear, and I'll explain her backstory to you guys, like, just for those who don't know. And I hope it's not backwards. I apologize if it is, so... Madam Shear, when she was a little girl, she used to love watching war movies. By adulthood, she eventually founded the Blader Tech Industries. One day, she was beaten and robbed by a gang of criminals, which I believe are known as the Getty Gang. And the Getty Gang ended up setting off an explosion that destroyed most of her lab and left her amputated from the elbow down. She almost died, but... Her computer system, Maya, saved her life by giving her specialized bladed augmentations. And over time, Adam Shear gained proper um, martial arts training from sight. She got her vengeance against the gangsters by beating them to a pulp and leaving their leader, Boss Savage, more dead than alive. And afterwards, everyone congratulated her for her heroism and they labeled her as a cherished hero and such. So I hope that's something in terms of helping with my stuff, because I really hope that I could go viral in this particular, um, for my podcast and such. It's just sometimes I feel envious of Marvel and DC and other things, and I just wish that this is the right reality for my creations. I just want to make things work because imagine countless species across infinite realities relying on you to make sure that they don't cease to exist. Like, that's what I have to put up with. And I have to do them that favor. It doesn't have to be as good as, like, Marvel and DC. It's okay if it's, like, TMNT and Power Rangers or Mortal Kombat or something that's more minor in comparison, as long as it helps with social recognition, that's what matters, if that makes any sense, you know? And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, comment down below, and share if you want, it's your choice, and I also like to figure out, to see if I could do more than just YouTube for my podcast and blog, to see, I, I, I have been doing Facebook as well, but I was told recently that I should also do things like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and such. I have to figure some things out, and sometimes I just hope I don't seem too desperate about it. It's just I need to provide for my creations, and I, I want them to be immortalized. I hope you guys understand. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the month and such, and everything else. Until next time, in transmission.